Hello, everyone. My name is Radha Krishnan Chakyat. I am a commercial photographer based out of Mumbai, and I am also an X Ride Colorati master and also a YouTuber at Pixel Village. Today, I'm really happy to be a part of the Adobe Max event, and we're going to be talking about color. What else can you expect a photographer to talk about, right? Okay, so we're going to be talking about color and how you can achieve good colors using Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. And of course, with the help of some fantastic monitors from ASUS, uh, I'm going to be using the PA279CV. And this one is the PA148CTV. It's a touch panel. Both are from the Pro Art series. All right, so to today's uh, topic about color. Now, in the web designing world, there is this famous uh, or popular acronym called the VisiWig. What you see is what you get. Uh, I think it is more relevant to a photographer than a web designer because we work with colors, all right. But VisiWig means what you see is what you get. And uh, in a photographer's world, I would replace the Y with an I, saying that what I see is ideally what you should get. But in real world scenario, we see that it it, it happens, but it doesn't happen by default. Uh, that's probably because though the digital world has really enabled you to handle colors across the platform with relative ease by, you know, putting these international color consortium standards by way of using profiles, we, we still don't really get them primarily due to, let's say, lack of real understanding or probably due to this carelessness saying that look i bought the best camera i bought the best computer color should come by default but unfortunately that is not the case so one must really understand the importance of handling color especially the color profiles throughout your workflow in order to let the viewer see what you saw as a photographer now we see reflected light. The light comes into the uh, eyes, the eyes decodes them, and of course your brain creates that wonderful image. Everything happens in a very analog fashion. But when it comes to uh, computers or, or cam digital cameras, they see it a little different. They see it as hue and saturation and luminance. When you shoot using a digital camera, the incoming light information is converted into digital information and it's stored as data. Basically, that data is the horoscope. It, it tells everything about that image. But sometimes you shoot just JPEGs only, right? In which time the camera automatically converts that data into a JPEG image. At that point, it is no longer a data. It is a graph image which you can see and dumps or don't save the raw data. But once that is done, you have by and large, uh, uh, you know, kind of limited all scope for further improvement on that image. Now, when you shoot raw, like I said, you have everything that the camera saw is recorded in it. The ideal way should be to use that data and with the use of softwares like the Lightroom and Photoshop and some excellent monitors like this, you can convert those images into fantastic images. And at that point, you will be actually letting your viewers see what you saw as a photographer. It is actually uh, easier said than done. You need to definitely, like I said in the beginning, you need to follow certain discipline. First thing, you must tell the camera. Camera is just a device, right? You must tell the camera to see the light and the color properly, for which you need to actually profile the camera using a color checker passport. Uh, the time allowed here is too short, so I'm not going into how to calibrate. There are lots of videos on the internet. Please watch them. But this using a color checker passport will definitely help you to uh, get a, a real, really accurate color to capture all that color and bring it on to Lightroom to begin with. Once that is done, the camera records uh, an image. A display like this will display that image in front of you. Then you will 
eventually use that image either on a computer on a mobile phone or as printed material or if you are working with moving images you might even decide to project them or watch them on television or watch them on your computer screen so at every level you are taking this data and transferring from one medium to another and every time those softwares and those hardwares interpret these colors differently that's how the internet world works or the digital world works so the objective of the photographer in order to achieve that vc week what i saw is what you should get uh, the principle i should actually make sure that what left from my studio is what i saw after which you don't have too much of control on it except that if the person down the line uh, you know follows that same discipline then of course you will start getting it so we have to start with a good monitor a good monitor which is calibratable and also capable of showing you the colors that you have shot okay which means your camera your display and your target device all should be calibrated if at any point if your calibration goes out at that point you will start seeing false colors chances are that you will see false colors and brightness and contrast there so you need to start with a great monitor here we are starting with a fantastic monitor a 4k monitor from asus the pa279 cv uh, which can reproduce 100% of srgb and 100% of rec 709 now the srgb is something which is predominantly used in the internet world and for all practical purposes digital printing is also perfectly okay uh, with srgb now you must do a little bit of additional reading about color consortium color profiles and what is srgb and what is adobe rgb and what is rec 709 now these two monitors are actually calman certified for color accuracy one and it is also has a delta word it's the error value which is less than two these two monitors to show you excellent colors you must keep them in ideal viewing conditions which basically means that no flaring you should have even lighting at the backdrop preferably a 5600 you know uh, kelvin colors or at least the color should not vary during your work times if it happens you will start seeing false colors so if that is the way you're going to work with this just go to the uh, menu pick the kind of uh, color calibration that requires you have a uh, lots of uh, color uh, calibration profiles available in the monitor pick that and start using it instantly but if you are working in your home environment where there is window lights and ever changing lighting conditions then you should make use of a custom calibrating tool uh, from x right this one is called the i1 display pro we use it uh, on all our monitors in the studio because we have varying we have a large window on one side of the studio so we have varying uh, lighting conditions so we use this to calibrate so once it is calibrated this monitor will give you accurate colors for a long time like an automobile which will require alignment wheel alignment and balancing after let's say 5000 kilometers the monitors also will require to be recalibrated after let's say you can decide say two weeks three weeks one month depending on uh, your usage okay so so we talked about how to profile your camera how to calibrate uh, your monitors then the no next important one is to set your software to work with a particular kind of workflow assume that you're a photographer working on still images and your target is a print and the printer has a certain you know type of printing machine and it's going to be printed on a particular type of pa paper that is your targets now when you look at an image on your monitor you should ideally be seeing what you should be seeing at the final print in order to do that you need to go to of course uh, you to run the uh, lightroom uh, edit menu 
preferences and in preferences external editing and you need to pick an appropriate uh, setting here so i personally prefer to edit in tiff okay not in jpeg uh, jpeg i would use the jpeg for distribution but for me to create my master file i will use a tiff and preferably in adobe rgb but since predominantly my target is srgb i'm going to be using uh, tiff and i'm going to pick uh, srgb as an option my resolution i come from the print world so i keep it as 300 dpi and i don't use any compression so which means whenever i click process here and open on photoshop it will pick tiff srgb and a 16 bit file which means it's got maximum information and it will open up in uh, photoshop now once that is done okay the system understands that this is my preference what you are looking at here is my raw file it contains everything and now i have to start working on these images uh, when i look at it it's a perfectly exposed image let me see if i go have something else yeah this one probably have uh, some overexposed uh, area so i will start working on it for working uh, as you has a very interesting feature in the uh, in this particular uh, touch panel so i it's called the control panel it's basically allow me to uh, have a very intuitive way of using the lightroom controls using this particular uh, touch uh, screen well typically we would use um, uh, the mouse or an external device but this has a two in one usage well so i need to i need to activate it in control settings uh, i need to go and activate it so this is the kind of screen that i will get when i enable i can use this that particular thing called the control panel with almost all adobe softwares so photoshop lightroom premiere after effects or is all are supported so once i apply i get the control panel it looks something like this and it is customizable so all these keys can be custom you know what a customizable uh, feature is so i can pick any of these go to the control panel setup and customize this and i can use this you know as a, a touch panel to zoom i can control the clarity here i i have you know quick controls to you know rotate the image just touch and it rotates uh, it can stack it can undo and redo i can flag i can unflag i can reject i can also move from one image to another now when i look at this image and look at the corresponding histogram um i see this image as a little kind of over the highlights are a little blown but i've shot raw so i can actually control this image the first thing i'll do is to reduce the white a little okay so i've reduced and i can also see corresponding changes happening here and then i'll pull the highlight a little there i go so when i look at the histogram i can see that it has now come in to the usable uh, gamut now what i'm going to do is to open up the shadows a little so i'm going to open the blacks a little and that's it i'm going to increase the saturation is perfect uh, well what else do i have to do i have to warm it up a bit i just want to warm it up a little bit that's it and uh, let me see the sharpness i can use this wheel to zoom in and this is very interesting of course i've zoomed beyond the size yeah okay i think i am fine with this image and now when i hit process it will process a 16 bit diff file with 100% rgb because i am looking at a uh, 100% rgb gamut here so it is reproducing it is showing me everything that is there now when you use monitors which cannot reproduce the 100% srgb which of course majority of us use because of various reasons we don't really get to see these colors 
And in such situations, what do we do? We work, we push it. I mean, of course, that information is there in your image, but you can't see it. So just because of that reason, because you're not seeing it, because you want the other person to see it, and you're not seeing it here, you try to add, you try to manipulate it beyond what is required. So the most popular one is increasing the saturation, increasing the vibrance so that, you know, you start seeing something on the monitor. But by doing that, you're actually pushing that image beyond the usable limits. And well, of course, you end up messing it up. So here in this case, I know that this is exactly what uh, I have seen. I'm, I've kind of warmed it up a little because I want my viewer to see a little warmer image. And yes, now I got this and I can just export it. And once I export, it will export with my preset. Now I have two files in the computer. Uh, one is uh, worked on on another machine and the one which I have worked on here using these two monitors. I want to open this in Photoshop and show you in side-by-side -side mode for which let me open Photoshop and I also want to quickly tell you a few things that you have to be careful while working the Photoshop as well. There also you have to set your color settings properly. So you need to go to edit color settings and here the working space should be set to sRGB. Then you have the CMYK and other and then I, I'm, I don't really care now for the time being because that's something else and color management policies will have to be set as preserve embedded. Whatever that I have embedded in my original file should be preserved. It should not be thrown away. And it should also ask me what to do. So th once these are done, well, then you are actually set to kind of preview those images. And you go to that folder, select both the images and drag into Photoshop. And both files are being opened now. Uh, go to Windows and arrange them side by side. These are two images. This one is worked on uh, another computer. This one is worked on this monitor. Now this, as you can see, this is kind of gone green and cold. This is now nice and warm. So let me enlarge it a bit. This is nice and warm. This is blue and cold. Well, this is how I work. I work with a little bit of discipline little old-fashioned way make sure that my color profile is not messed with I keep it as the sacrosanct principle in the studio work with best tools a 4k monitor a 27 inch monitor I told you it is the PA 279 CV which is which is Kalman certified uh, calibratable monitor and here I have uh, the 148 CTV. I also use this when I shoot outdoors. This is my monitor. I mean, when you shoot outdoors, uh, your LCD of your camera uh, will not really kind of give you good color reproduction. In such cases, I connect and play it onto this monitor and see if I've got everything right. So I use this small smart uh, monitor as my preview monitor as well when I go out. If you are interested in uh, learning photography, please head over to pixelvillage.com. We have a set of fantastic photography teachers there taking classes for you. They're all recorded sessions. You can watch the bouquet of offering and if you like it, you can subscribe. So that's what my workflow is. Very simple. This is the best I can explain in the, uh, the time given to me. So this is Radha Krishna Chakya signing off. Hope to meet you soon with another episode on color. Bye for now.